good news everyone. In the last week I worked uh, on my Cuttlefish app and I developed an easy to use uh, plugin system so you guys can create your own events, own actions and extend the functionality of, uh, of Cuttlefish. If you use Cuttlefish from my um, PPA, then you will find in the, car in the current version under Edit the new menu item plugins where you can click on Edit Own Plugins. And when you click there, it will open your favorite editor and open up a default file for you. And I've already written some stuff uh, so you can just begin to extend um, this or um, create new plugins, I don't know what. But for this tutorial I will just delete all this stuff and give you an introduction or a tutorial from scratch. So the first thing I want to do is to create a new stimulus or how I call them internally um, events and for that I need a class from Cuttlefish events. I will need to import Cuttle event as well as from Cuttlefish plugins, plugins, I need to import Cuttle plugin. So what's the difference between the both the both classes? Um, Cuttle event will describe your class as an event class, and Cuttle plugin will tell the plugin manager to load the class. So you can write helper classes or classes that um, are abstract uh, abstract events or abstract actions that you specify in um, subclasses and by tagging only those classes that you need you can with cuttle plugin you can choose which classes should be loaded and which not so if I write a new class uh, I have it to give it a name and I will call it hello world watcher since it shall watch in your home directory for a file called helloworld.txt and it inherits cuttle event and of course cuttle plugin. Basic stuff is to write not int but init uh, and do some analyzation cuttle event init self and the same for cuttle plugin just default constructors, nothing to nothing big here. And what you do next is to describe what you what the class is all about. So you give it a name. Let's call it Hello World Watcher. That's the display name. It's important that the internal name is the class name, and that has to be unique over all uh, events and actions. Otherwise, if you um, otherwise you can overwrite existing actions and existing um, events. So if you want to do that, just check out what's the original class name of the action or event you want to overload and create your own um, class in, um, in a file which is located in your home directory slash dot cuttlefish slash plugins because these these classes are preferred to be loaded in case of um, having classes with the same name. Okay, um, then you give a description. Uh, we'll call this checks for your home directory slash hello world dot txt and give it a category uh, that will be your plugins. And to finish the um, implementation of an uh, event, we have to implement the setup method as well as the uh, teardown method. So whatever you're going to do, if you want to pull in a separate th thread or if you want to re register to the dbus or I don't know what, 
you can you know, always have to set up the things in setup obviously and in teardown you just tidy up afterwards so we're we're done with our first um, plugin and you can just um, check this I will create a new reflex call it testing hello world activated by a stimulus and as you can see or as you can cannot see there is no there is no hello world watcher here because we haven't reloaded the plugins yet I have written a functionality um, um, to reload the plugins so you don't have to restart cuttlefish all the time just play uh, click this button or press uh, Ctrl R and if you reload and go to stimulus then you see your plugins hello world watcher and that's it we installed our first plugin it's really easy and so let's give uh, this class a little bit of functionality I think the best way of implementing this would be to use libinotify which is designed to um, listen to folder changes, to file changes, whenever um, there is writing, reading, accessing actions on any kind of files in the Linux Linux uh, file system. But since I want to make this easy and s simple, I will just use um, the old school polling method, which is very very evil. And I will use um, the G object timeout technology from GI repository. I import G object and I'll set it up in G object in the setup method. And let's set it. I have to call ti timeout at every thousand milliseconds. I want to call a function which is called self underscore check um, and I'll implement this here um, check self underscore yes. okay and because we have to clean up afterwards um, I will save the handler ID which is um, returned by this function in the local field, so I can later call g object uh, source remove with self hid and that's almost it. Now we can have a first test, and for this I've implemented a method which is called debug. It's very very simple. I know there's a big l logging mechanism in Python, but it was and it has a lot of options and it's really really good. But it was a little bit of overload for me, so I just developed this small debug function that takes one parameter that should be a string or something that can be converted into a string, and yeah, that's it. So if you say debug checking for the file then you're then you're almost done you have to return true in this function because that's the uh, semantics of that g objects uh, g object is um, asking you because timeout add will only Reevaluate the um, the function if you if the function returned true uh, the last time, and then you can open a terminal, and whenever you call debug the first time, there will be created a file in tmp slash um, cuttlefish log, which is currently not existing, obviously, and if I reload now by pressing Ctrl R, I can see. Um, oh, I didn't save the file, so save the file, reload, 
and as I can see here now there's this new file created and if I say tail follow tmp cuttlefish log and you will see I will not be written checking for the file but there will be um, a traceback because I haven't um, imported debug and what I also wanted to show you that any kind of exceptional behavior that happens in the plugin files is catched and also written to the cuttlefish log so if you're doing anything wrong and you don't know why your plugin is not working then you check this file because in most of the times you will find your answer there so what I will do is to Im import debug from cuttlefish plugins and reload and as you can see every second there is now checking for the file Sweet. So now I will implement a, oops, a helper function which is called is created and this function will check if the file is created and for that I will need OS path and I will check for the file by saying return OS path is file which checks if there is a file is file existing and it's also a real file not a directory um, OS pass join OS pass expand user your home directory and hello world .txt and camel case all right so now I can say here something like um, this and if I reload now um, like this and if I reload now then you can see false 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 uh, let me open a new terminal and if I touch hellworld.txt now this turns to true obviously and if I remove it again it removes it turns to false again um, but what we want to is not to have this event every second but only once when it's created so I will check first in the setup routine and I will save the uh, the, the result the result in um, this field created uh, set is created and in the check routine I will check if it's not been created in the past and it's created by now and I will create a local variable created like this then I want to say trigger yes and nothing more and at last I have to update this value Oops. and reload and as you can see by now it's still I haven't saved it again reload and no, there's no more output coming and when I create the file there's one time the trigger which is spelled wrong and if I delete it and wait for a second and touch it again then it will be triggered again that's absolutely the behavior we want to so now it's time to finish the job and what we have to call now is self.trigger whenever you call this function whether it's in your helper functions in your class or it's in setup or it's in teardown you will cause the stimulus to fire 
And that's it. We created our first full class um, plugin, which works perfectly fine. And now I will give you an example of an action. Um, so I have to import from cuttlefish actions cuttle action and it's the basic design of the class is pretty much the same so I'll just copy this call this hello world writer because now I want to create an action that will write into a hello world.txt and I will change this to cuttle action and also here update the name hello world writer and write something into hello world.txt and it's again it's in your plugins and um, it's even more easier to implement an action because you only have to implement one function that is called execute and in this function you will do whatever you want to and this function will be run on a separate thread so you don't have to worry about long time problems uh, you won't freeze the uh, UI you will you can just do whatever you want to if you have long time long running actions then please also implement a function which is called interrupt so whenever this function is called you should stop whatever you're doing on this is just when cuttlefish is, cuttlefish is shut down or plugins are reloaded you know, I have to clean up all the events and I have to stop all the actions that are currently running for anything like we write now anything that is finished in like I don't know a second or so or even faster you don't have to worry about uh, implementing some um, some interrupt method so what I want to do is with the file here I want to write something into it and I uh, will open it as hello world file and write into hello world file write uh, no sorry that was wrong um, and I will write um, hello world save it and if I want to create a new reaction as you can see again there is no new plugins because I haven't reloaded and after I reload it I can see there's your plugins and there's the hello world writer so now I combine those two things and whenever I let me remove the file hello world txt and touch the file hello world txt then you can see here yeah, our um, event triggered and also if I cut hello world txt and there's nothing written into it because I forgot to say we will open this in write mode and this will just clear the file and write whatever will be should be written. Yeah. So uh, let me do this again. Reload the plugins. Um, delete the file. Touch the file. And let's look into it. Yes, there's hello world. So that's the most easiest action I could think of and now I want to give it a little bit more of parameters so the user can decide 
what should be written into the file and which file should be taken. To create params, I developed an, a system. You will add, you have to add uh, a fourth um, class field. Is it class field? Okay. I don't know. Add, um, you have to add a dictionary. And in this dictionary, the keys are your variable names that will be automatically automatically saved. And I will have a message, and you, yes, the value will give the default value when nothing is given by the user. So that would be hello world. And I want to have a file, and that would be this. Okay, so the next thing that you have to implement is an editor which describes how the parameters are edited. And you will do this by creating a nested class called editor that has to inherit from, sorry, cuttle plugin dot editor. And usually you only have to implement one function that is called begin takes no parameters and what you do is you return the UI for um, the parameters but not in the GTK way but in a, um, by using some helper classes that I developed so for this you have to import from cuttlefish uh, params and you have several params. You have the bool param, which is a bool value displayed by a switch. Uh, by a switch, a file param, folder param, uh, these are wrong. And int param for integer, select app param to select a f an installed application, uh, select param to choose from a list, and a string param, which is what we will use here. And you will just say something like message is a string param and create the string param, which is just created by giving a label like your message. And the same thing for the file that would be a string param the file. Okay, that's basically it. And what you have to do is, um, oh, I, is to access the parameters later on. You can do this by accessing param underscore params, which is a dictionary. It's mm, in the case it's usually this dictionary, but whenever the user has given you other inputs, it will be those inputs that he gave you. So if you use file, then it will be as default, it would be, th would be this, but it might be anything else. And we will write not hello world, but we will write self dot params message. Save it. Go to cuttlefish, reload our plugins, go to reaction, and as you can see, there are now the parameters. Hello world and the file. And let's let me just change this to prove that it's working. Um, hey there from Germany. All right. And now let me delete the file, touch the file, and. As you can see, it works perfectly fine. And what you may want to do is to improve this kind of how to this kind of parameter because entering a file name by a string is not the best idea. So you can also import a file param and just change string param to file param. I will 
soon in the future I will give a full documentation on the parameters I have written that are allowed to use you to use to and um, I will also provide more parameters for now you can just have a look in opt extrasubuntu.com cuttlefish cuttlefish plugins because there are all the plugins listed that come by default and also you can just look into params um, wait a second there should be something like params pi this pi because um, there are all the parameters defined and it, they are not documented by now that will happen sometime in the future I hope in, this, in the near future um, for now you have to just check, your, check how I did it in the other plugins okay so if I change string param to file param here and open up um, cuttlefish, reload the plugin and you can see it's not using um, a text field but a button to choose another file so I can now choose anything else it's quite easy I think the last thing I want to do is if you add an order you can say I want first the file and then the message because now it's the opposite way and maybe you're like yeah I don't know I don't like that like it this way also it's not alph alphabetically um, so give it an order and reload the plugin and that's it also if you ha if you want to create internal things you can just add them here and into the params and don't write them into the order so if I leave out file for example and reload the plugin then you can only parameterize your message but not the file alright I think I'm done here we created two plugins one for an event, one for an action. Um, and one thing that I think is quite important is this parameters system works the same way for events. So if you want to, if you want to do the same thing here for the file, you can just say, yeah, I want here file, and it's a file param I want to watch. Uh, the file to monitor and then I will not use this but self.params file um, it's already open reload um, then oh okay there's still the order, I delete the order, reload the plugin, and you can see there's a parameter for your stimulus. So it's that simple. For now, if you have developed a cool action or a cool event, just post it on Pastebin and contact me via, I think the best is via um, the, launch, the launch pad. Okay that's it and thanks for watching see you soon